What's up guys, Brad here. In this video, I'll be reviewing the SVS PB1000 Pro subwoofer. Is this $600 subwoofer one of the best entry-level price subwoofers on the market? Well, let's find out. So previously, I did an overview video on the PB1000 Pro where I talked about the tech specs, went over what features it offers, and gave my general first impressions on how it sounded. Now, if you haven't seen that video, feel free to check it out in the card above. I won't be really talking about what I covered in that video here unless it's necessary, so you may want to consider watching that video first if you're interested in stuff like you know, what the subwoofer offers in terms of connections on the back. I also won't be covering SVS's smartphone app in this video as honestly, it's really easy to use, allows you to access every setting on the subwoofer from your smartphone or tablet, and it just works as you'd expect. Now, before we dive into the review, if you're new to the channel, consider clicking that subscribe button and ringing the bell icon so you never miss out when I upload a new video. Also, you'll find links in the description below to SVS's subwoofers and speakers, including the PB1000 Pro, along with calibration tools I'd recommend checking out in my complete home theater setup. Now these are affiliate links, which do help support the channel at no cost to you. And to be completely clear here, SVS did let me borrow the PB1000 Pro in order to review it. So a huge thanks goes out to them, though this is not a sponsored video and they didn't pay me anything to do the review. My opinions are my own and SVS will be seeing this video for the first time when it goes live on YouTube. So I want to start things off by talking a bit about the frequency response of the PB1000 Pro and to let you know what kind of response I get in my room. Now SVS lists the frequency response as 17 to 260 hertz, plus or minus 3 dB depending on placement, room size, etc. Now if we take a quick look at my EQ response in my room at my main listening position, we can see I get really great response down to 16.5 hertz. This particular spot I have the subwoofer placed at is the best subwoofer placement option for my room, and it's where I place every subwoofer I review. Now, 16.5 hertz is obviously below the rated spec of the subwoofer, but that's also why they include the plus or minus 3 dB after the listed response. I wanted to point this out because typically a big factor in getting the rated response of any subwoofer comes down to proper placement as well as the room itself. If you're interested in how you can use REW to determine the best subwoofer placement in your room, then feel free to check out that video in the card above. So let's move on to performance and sound quality with movies. Now, as much as I'd love to show you these demo clips in full with video of the movie itself, I can't really do that because of copyright. However, I have edited these audio clips in such a way to isolate mostly the subwoofer and low frequencies so you can still hear how the subwoofer sounds. And a quick disclaimer, since these audio demos were recorded with a microphone, they shouldn't be viewed as a way to gauge a subwoofer sound quality or performance at all. Most mics are extremely limited when recording low frequency effects, so keep that in mind when listening. Now, the only adjustments I've made to the audio here were boost to the overall level and an EQ to cut off some of the higher frequencies. So first up, I popped in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and skipped to chapter 11. This is one of my go-to audio demos as it has tons of range in the bass department with lots of cool low frequency sweeps and impacts. The PB1000 Pro handled this flawlessly here, energizing the room with what felt like minimal effort. When the time came for those low bass impacts to take center stage, the PB1000 Pro hit hard with bass that was both tight and palpable with nothing in the way of boominess or distortion. Now next up, I checked out the opening of Blade Runner 2049, which has an excellent low bass synth drone that plays throughout most of it. And when I say low bass, I mean it can rearrange your organs if your system can go low enough. The PB1000 Pro again handled this with minimal effort. It filled the room with tactile bass energy that could easily be felt through the couch, and I cranked it up even louder and could never get it to distort or bottom out. I was honestly super impressed.
everyone's favorite waterbound superhero was up next with Chapter 3's fight in the submarine and culminating in a grenade launcher being used against the shirtless Aquaman. And yet again, the PB-1000 Pro handled this whole scene with ease. Is anyone else noticing a pattern here? The base impacts and low frequency sweeps sounded super clean and tight and had no issues energizing my 17 by 20 foot room. There were plenty of moments where you could feel the base and there's plenty of bass below 25 hertz. So, you know, you could annoy your neighbors or people living with you. Now moving on to games, I booted up Doom Eternal which has tons of low frequency effects and a soundtrack that has a decent low end at times. As with movies, the PB-1000 Pro handled this without even breaking a sweat, with bass that was super tight, powerful, and really hit hard when the action called for it. Next, I booted up Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, which has one of the coolest base-heavy rocket launchers I've heard in a game. When it hits enemies or the floor in front of enemies, the explosion has a nice low-frequency impact that hits really hard, and the PB-1000 Pro really made it shine with bass that I could feel in my seat. As far as music listening goes, I was super impressed with just how musical this sub sounds. Everything from metal to classical to 1980s synth stuff, it sounded almost, dare I say, like a sealed sub would. It can be a bit hard to describe, but essentially the transition between notes was super quick, even in ported mode, which can be a problem for some ported subwoofers. It sounded identical as it did with movies and games, with nothing in the way of distortion, even when I really cranked up the volume to uncomfortable listening levels. SVS does offer the ability to plug the ports on the front and switch to sealed mode if that's what you prefer, and it's always nice to have that as an option. So after listening to this subwoofer over the past couple of months, what are my final thoughts on the SVS PB1000 Pro? Is this really one of the best entry-level subwoofers you can buy? Well, I think it's pretty obvious at this point. This is hands down one of the best entry level subwoofers you can buy in my opinion. To get this kind of bass clarity, tactile response, and tightness out of a $600 subwoofer is crazy. SVS's 12 inch driver in the PB1000 Pro is definitely pulling its weight in delivering those subsonic frequencies SVS claims it reproduces, and it does so with enough headroom in most systems that you can crank it up and not worry about damaging anything outside of maybe some stuff that isn't anchored down in your room. And while I didn't talk about it in the review, SVS's subwoofer app makes adjusting any setting on the subwoofer super easy. Now, even though this is more of a convenience feature that doesn't really have any effect on performance, I'd add it to the very long list of things this subwoofer gets right. So there aren't any cons to the PB1000 Pro then, right? Well, honestly, there aren't any huge glaring issues or flaws here, and for the asking price, I think it's an excellent value. I, I guess if I had to nitpick something, it would be that I would have liked a bit more power out of the sledge amplifier. Now, don't get me wrong, it still has plenty of output and volume with the 325 watts of RMS power it has, and it should be more than enough for the majority of the people that buy the subwoofer, but if you really like to crank your system last Loud and want your bass front and center, then you may run out of juice when a movie calls for a really loud note to hit. In all honesty though, this is definitely a nitpick and not at all a knock against the PB1000 Pro. For the price and performance you get out of it, the amp is more than sufficient and adding a more powerful amp would have definitely driven the price up. 
Overall, I cannot recommend the SVS PB1000 Pro enough as it's one of, if not the best entry level subwoofer I've ever heard. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and enjoyable, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the PB1000 Pro or if you have one yourself and wanna let others know about your experience, please post a comment down below. Also, be on the lookout for a video comparing the PB1000 Pro to its bigger brother, the PB2000 Pro, very soon. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.